Hi, welcome to week five of my Halloween crafting series. Today, I'm talking about vintage Halloween. I have a lot to show you, so let's get started. Last weekend, I went to a junk festival in my area and one booth had this great vintage Halloween stuff. And I could have spent every penny in my pocket right there, but I decided I could make these on my own and they are the inspiration for today's video. So here are all the vintage DIYs I'm working on today. I only wound up buying one thing from that booth and it was this really neat reproduction vintage Halloween poster and I paid $7 for it. I have seen online a seller that had it for $8 so I guess I got a good deal. If I can find that link, I will link it in my description box below if you want to recreate this project. Now, I'm going to frame it out using this clearanced picture frame that came from Hobby Lobby. It was only $2 and some change. It didn't have a back, it didn't have glass, but that's okay, I can work with all that. To make this even better, I'm using this vintage grinning black cat mask that I got from Spirit Halloween for $12.99, and he's going to be popping out of the frame. And Yachty was pretty interested to know who this new cat was in the house. The first step was to trace around the picture frame and cut out the poster to fit inside the frame. Next, you're going to need something to use for backing. And I had this fold up cardboard box that I think came from the Dollar General store, but any piece of nice heavy cardboard will work. So then I did the same thing. I traced around the frame and then cut out the cardboard for the backing. To attach the poster to the cardboard, I'm using double-sided tape that I got from the Dollar Tree. I used my heavy duty stapler to attach the backing to the frame. And I used hot glue to attach the cat mask to the middle. Um, it wasn't as easy as pie <laughs> to attach the cat because not all of his edges are will be touching. So I just found the places where the mask would be touching the poster and tried to hot glue there. You could add a hanger if you want, but I'm going to use command strips to hang mine on the wall. It probably doesn't surprise you that the black cat is my favorite out of this bunch of vintage DIYs. Now, since I'm talking about vintage Halloween, it's only appropriate that I should share with you my big box of vintage doodads that my wonderful mother-in-law gave to me. She found this at an estate sale. I'm not sure what she gave for it. It wasn't very much for this whole big box 
of really, really old sewing materials, lots and lots of buttons and still on their tags and a few really cool goodies like this box I thought was really, really neat. I sorted everything out and put all these buttons in this Sterilite container that I got from Michaels and I got a great big bag full of lace and material pieces to use in my crafts and a great big bag of buttons that are still on their cards. How cool is that? Also, the other things that I thought were really interesting, this old glass Corsetan uh, cold pill bottle and Dr. Tut's pills, like that's pretty old. And some other things that I thought were just really neat. In the next couple of DIYs, you will see me use some of the vintage goodies that came out of this box. This plank decoration came out of the box. I know it's not old. I think it might've came from the Dollar General store, but I'm going to use it to put this vintage Halloween picture on. The first step is to paint over those words. I'm painting the whole thing black and it took two coats to cover up the words. And I know that the Dollar Tree sells some signs kind of like this and also the Dollar General store. So just look around and see what you might be able to find for a buck or two that you can do this project with. And I'm going to adhere the picture using matte Mod Podge. So I'm going to put a layer of Mod Podge on first and then I will put the picture down and then I'll Mod Podge over the picture to seal it all in. After the Mod Podge is completely dry, give it a couple hours at least, then if you're using a plank piece like I am, you can go through with a utility knife and cut through those planks so that it looks like it's painted on this plank board. And don't forget to trim out the ends of the boards. So if you'll see up there in the right hand corner, I got a smudge of black paint somehow. It must've been on my hands. So I'm going to use some of this vintage lace that came out of the goodie box. And I'm going to make a little bow, which I thought was really appropriate because this little girl's wearing some lace. Then I wanted to use some of this Rick Rack. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that the little uh, label on this said Rick Rack. So I'm going to put some of this at the top and the bottom, and I'm just going to hot glue it down. And I hot glued the bow in the corner to hide my little faux paw. <laughs> I didn't really feel like the rope hanger went with the motif anymore, so I cut it off. And it already has a place on the back where you can hang it on a nail, so I didn't feel like it was necessary anyway. I will leave a link in my description box below where I got all of my vintage images today. I love this one so much because she has actual vintage pieces. you guys remember these old Halloween decorations? Well, every year my grandma put these on her doors and windows and I think they're the reason why I love vintage Halloween so much because when she got these out, I knew Halloween was getting close and it was time for fun. For the next DIY, you will need some material and I have these extra large placemats that I got at the Burlap Fabric Company, but any kind of material will work as long as it's lighter in color because you're going to be sublimating on it. Now I liked the fringed edges of this material, so I'm going to try to save this. I want to make a banner and it's going to be the traditional triangle, so what I'm going to do is just cut off the corners 
of these pieces of material so that I will have just the triangles. You will need to leave about one inch at the top like seam allowance for the material that we're going to put this all together with at the top. And here are the images that I'm using. I printed them out with my sublimation printer. If you don't have a sublimation printer, you could go to Walmart and buy the uh, transfer sheets that you just print with a regular printer, print your image out and iron on. And I will have a link below to the website where I got these images. For sublimation, I set my Cricut Easy Press to 385 degrees and I'm going to press it for 35 seconds. Make sure the pieces that you're sublimating on are free of lint and hair. If your material has any wrinkles, you can just use your Easy Press to iron those out. You will need some heat resistant tape. I use the Cricut brand, and this is to hold your image in place so that it doesn't move while you're pressing it. And if your image has any wording on it, it's very important to mirror your image before you print so that your words don't read backwards. I always use Dollar Tree parchment paper to cover my image and protect my Easy Press. Then just put the easy press down on top and let it do the work. And the most fun part of the whole process is revealing your image. Next, I used hot glue to attach all the triangles together at the top. I counted it most important that the fringed edges meet up just alike. So there will be some pieces of mine <laughs> because of the way I cut them that will be sticking up higher at the top, but that's okay because it's going to be hidden. So I dug around in my vintage goodies bag and dug out this hem facing that is black and I thought it would be the perfect thing to go along the top edge of this banner to hold it all together. So I hot glued that all along the top and I left enough that it can fold over to the back. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways you can achieve this look. You could sew it, you could use heat bond tape or um, fabric glue, but I am just using hot glue because that's what I have and it was just easier for me. Now the banner is pretty much completed. All it needs now is a little embellishment. I'm going to make some messy bows using these Dollar Tree ribbons. I picked these because they're vintage Halloween colors, orange, black, and white. I'm going to cut them all about the same length, and the wider ones, I'm going to cut those down the middle so they're not as wide. I just cut a whole big stack of those ribbons. I wasn't really counting or anything, and that's kind of the whole point of the messy bow. <laughs> you just sort of start picking up these little scraps of ribbon and just crisscrossing them until you like how it looks, and then tie it all together in the center, and I used some black yarn to do that. I made enough of these messy bows so that they could go in each place where the triangles connected on the banner. Then I hot glued them in place. And I really think that these messy bows set this banner off perfectly. Okay, who remembers these chintzy plastic costumes that we wore in the early 80s, probably late 70s too, and you couldn't hardly breathe through those masks. Your face got so hot and these plastic ties always broke. <laughs> 
but it was so much fun going door to door to get your treats and to see everybody in your neighborhood and around your town. The world wasn't as scary a place as it is now and I loved my Care Bear costume. It would be fun if you would let me know in the comments what your favorite Halloween costume was that you wore when you were a kid. Now, for the next DIY, you'll need some blocks of wood. This was a scrap piece of wood that I bought for $1 at the Home Depot. And I had my husband, it was in one long piece, and I had my husband chop it up into blocks for me. And I'm going to make a black stain for these blocks. It's about a one-to-one -one ratio of whatever black paint you have laying around and water. Just paint the stain onto the blocks and then use a paper towel or an old rag to wipe it right back off. You'll want to stain or paint all sides of your blocks and you could absolutely do black paint, orange paint, white paint, whatever makes you happy. I was going for kind of a burnt wood look. These are the images that I'm going to use to Mod Podge onto my blocks. As I said before, all images I'm using in this video today, I will link the website below. Then paint the Mod Podge onto the wooden blocks one by one. I wouldn't do them all at once, but one by one. Paint the Mod Podge onto the blocks and stick your image down. Once all the images are stuck onto the blocks, then go back over with a thin coat of Mod Podge to seal it in. And this is what they look like when they're all dry, the neatest vintage decorations for pennies. The last DIY is using these picture frames from the Dollar Tree. I think it's a really fun idea to Google the images of Dracula and Frankenstein or whoever your favorite vintage horror movie characters are. Just Google the images and print them out and put them in the frames. It doesn't get more vintage Halloween than Bella Lugosi and Boris Karloff as Dracula and Frankenstein. They were the greats. Now let's take a look back at all the vintage Halloween DIYs today. I want to give a special thank you to my sweet mother-in-law who gifted me with those vintage goodies. And if you want to see more DIY fun, just click the link that I provided for you here and I'll see you next time. Bye.